Hi guys, Mr. Johnny here. In this video I'm gonna show you a little repair that I did to my multimeter to this one. I ain't gonna tilt it all the way because the little ball bearings are gonna fall out from this range switch. So that's that multimeter. The problem with it is it has an auto power off function and it was misbehaving. It was turning off way too early. So I already knowing knowing how that auto power off function is um, done in these multimeters, I straight away suspected a little capacitor, which you can see there, which was installed right here on the board, right? As you can see a footprint there. And if, if when I measured it, yes indeed it is very bad. It was leaky. 47 microfarad 16 volts. Let me connect it to a transistor tester and you will see how bad it is. All right, capacitor connected. Let's test it. Forty-eight point eight, not too bad. ESR is not too bad as well. Well, it is quite horrendous, but V loss is what we're after. Four point seven percent. That's way too much. A good capacitor should be well under one percent. Tolerable leakage is about one to one point five percent on these units, in this kind of what the transistor tester gives you. 1.5% is about the maximum that I'm gonna permit. If it's any more, just toss it away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install 4.7 microfarad capacitor there and it will be that. Very easy repair. But I also decided to combine the two Combine the two possible videos and show you around what's inside this meter. So that's the only board from it. As you can see, the cob there looks suspiciously like. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. 7106. So it's ICL 7106 clone. Nothing very fancy couple of MELF packages, it's nice. Let me get a macro on that one. So here they are. Oh, sorry for a finger in the <laughs> shot there. You can see the soldering is not too bad actually. The chip you see there is LM324. The soldering around the connectors are quite is quite crappy. I will go and reflow them. Lots of flux residues there. The S2M device I reckon is a TVS. So that's a part of the protection. Another part of the protection is a PTC right there. You can see little trim pot for whatever reason it is there. Another trim pot there, a puny glass fuse, which is obviously not filled, but hey, I ain't gonna use this on a high power applications. I am perfectly fine with this kind of protection. And one of these transistors you see in this corner is a transistor which passes. Uh, which connects the battery to the circuit. That's how the auto power off function works. There is a comparator hidden somewhere. It may very well be this chip. I don't know what the hell that is. Eh, it doesn't look like a comparator. It looks like some kind of logic chip. But anyway, hope you can hear it. I hope. Ah, yeah. I didn't block the mic this time. You should hear me. <laughs> All right, so. There is a trim pot marked VRF. That's probably voltage reference for the chip. So you can calibrate the entire device by doing that. Not only the voltage readout or something like that. The solder quality is not all that great.
this connect this switch was definitely hand soldered as you can see by the huge amount of flux but it's not too bad what the hell is that hmm. and that's some flux there One more look at these MELF packages. They're a funny package if you ask me. Because it's like a quarter watt through hole resistor, but with mounted like a surface mount piece. The range switch on the other side is, is normal. Typical for a cheap stuff. Again, I'm not too picky. Alright, that's it. That. Here's a zebra strip as you can see there. A piece of... that's it. That. Disconnect the macro lens. And that's it that, guys. Thanks for watching. See ya.